again. And uh, as you can see, uh, if it matters at all, and sometimes it doesn't matter at all, Elizondo, a little bigger upper body with uh, enormous biceps for a 135-pounder. This is round number one. The champion in beige trunks on the left of your screen, the challenger Elizondo in black. The referee, Joey Curtis, the 10-point scoring system in effect here, WBC rules, and the scoring done by three judges at ringside, all from Las Vegas, Dwayne Ford, Chuck Minker, and Lou Tabbitt. No three knockdown rule in this 15-round championship bout. Tim, in watching uh, Elizondo train, I noticed that he jabbed across his body and dropped his left hand, which means that when he jabs, he's open for a right hand. I'm, and I'm sure a smart fighter like uh, Aguayo is going to find that out during the fight. Well, watching the champion train on Wednesday, he was extremely sharp. appeared very ready for this bout. His sparring session was just a, a classic example of textbook boxing. Elizondo looked very fit. He's been training for this fight for five months. It was scheduled prior to the Ray Mancini defense. So Elizondo has uh, had plenty of preparation, and he is in outstanding shape, weighing in at 133 and a quarter. Well, Tim Alexander, when he throws his left jab, it stays up there just a little bit too long. And Aguello, being the type of champion he is, he's a very patient champion, and I think he's just going to wait and see what happens in the later rounds. I commented about Elizondo, a primarily a body puncher, but in three fight discussions, he said, I can box, I've got the reach and the height to stand in there with Arguello and go either way. But his strength is to get inside and bang away at the body. Number one, Tim Ryan, Gil Clancy, Sugar Ray Leonard here in Las Vegas, bringing you live WBC lightweight championship action. Aguayo is a very good counterpuncher also, especially inside. Champion scoring a combination. Less than a minute to go, round one. Elizondo is a little tight, and that's naturally so. After all, he's challenging for the championship of the world. It's his first big opportunity. And a lot of times when a fighter is tight, they can get nailed and hurt early. Another scoring combination from Arguello, the champion on the right of your screen. Arguello seems to be setting this man up for a left uppercut or either a left hook. Under 30 seconds to go, round one. Quite a contrast in championship styles. A long right hand from Arguello scored. Elizondo responded two punches of his own that failed to land. Final seconds, round one. <laughs> round number two, Alexis Arguello defends his crown. A little off balance there, but again, the experience. He grabbed on to Elizondo to prevent himself from tripping. Way on the right of your screen. Elizondo the challenger in black. But Jack a contrast in championship styles from Aaron Pryor a week ago to the classic boxing style of Alexis Arguello, right? Well, Arguello, now, you notice he's using that left jab quite often. And he's constantly setting up Elizondo. Elizondo makes a, 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 has a bad habit of coming inside and dropping his head. Arguello has a very good left uppercut and a very good and powerful left hook. Ray, he also has a very good right uppercut. It's just, he just about has everything. He's really a tough guy to try to figure out how to beat. In the corner, Jackie McCoy told, told Elizondo to get low and get underneath that left jab, but he's standing straight up and he's getting nailed. Elizondo has a slight cut on the bridge of his nose. Laser-like left jab brought that damage. Arguello has hardly missed it at all since the fight began. We're in round two. Arguello never had trouble with a guy uh, that Elizondo style possesses. Uh, he has trouble with guys that can box. Solid right hand to the head of the challenger. Elizondo showing his gameness. Bores right back in. Now you're, you're right. You notice there is no side-to-side -side movement at all. No side-to-side -side movement on Elizondo's part. He's right in front of Arguello all the time. And that, 
That is dangerous. Well, I think Alexander is trying to uh, pretty much smother Aguero's punches. And it's very difficult because Aguero has all the physical attributes, all the punches, major assets in each field. Well, as you say, Ray, you have to you have to outsmart him, use your ring generalship, and go side to side. That's the way Villamar Fernandez managed to get a decision from him, by going side to side, move to the right, move to the left, and never staying right in front of him. Under a minute to go, round two. Surprisingly enough, Alexander is still a little tight. And uh, reiterating what you said earlier, uh, Gil, the fact that here he has a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to fight for a title, and uh, he's still a little tight. Less than 30 seconds remaining in the second round. Elizondo, born December 8, 1955, in Corpus Christi. 180 fights as an amateur, losing only 10. Won the Texas Golden Gloves title four times. Started as an amateur at the age of 12. Wife Linda here at ringside. Son Robert, he has a little girl, Veronica. Final seconds, round two. Round number three scheduled for 15. The champion Alexis Arguello defending his lightweight crown for just the second time. The challenger on the attack, Elizondo. First time that he's been able to get a couple together. Scored with a right to the head after starting down below. Well, Alexander is following out instructions. He was told to uh, not to stay so far away from Aguero because Aguero is a very good boxer on the outside. The best way to beat him is inside or either to outbox him. Well, that's Elizondo's game is on the inside, but he hasn't gone in there, hasn't been able to get in there thus far. We're in round three. Oh, good right hand by Elizondo. Snap back the head of the champion. Well, Eddie Futch in Aguayo's corner told him to use that jab even more than he has been using. He says, keep that jab going. Keep this guy back. So now you have two corners. One guy's telling him to get inside, and the other guy's telling him to keep the other fellow outside. Good flurry by both fighters and a big left hand by Elizondo. Now backing up the champion. Elizondo has certainly relaxed and is looking more confident on this attack here in the third round. Slowing that left hook right hand combination. He landed a couple of good right hands. Aguayo's problem is the fact that he's being hit by that overhand right by Alexando. And the reason for that is because he's moving straight back instead of sidestepping. Arguello has lost only four times in his career. We know he can take a punch, and he's taken a few here in the third round from Elizondo. Good left hook of the body from the champion. No damage done in that exchange from Elizondo. Arguello blocking and slipping. Aguero can't stand back and let Alexander continue to punch like he's doing. He has to get right back to what he did in the first round with that left jab and continue to set his man up. Less than 30 seconds to go, round three. Today, that's exactly what he was told to do in the corner, but the other guy's not letting him do it now. This is Alexander's fight right here. This is the way he has rolled up his record. With only one loss, 22 victories. We didn't see it in the first two rounds. Final seconds of round three. Looking back at third round action, the challenger Elizondo, having backed up the champion, has a good scoring flurry here. And there's that overhand right you mentioned, Ray. Well, Aguero must go back to his basics, that left jab, because Elizondo is continuing to score with that overhand right. This is round number four as we're back live at the Showboat Hotel in Las Vegas, Nevada, the WBC lightweight championship. Alexis Arguello defending it for the second time. He won the featherweight title back in 1974, defended that four times successfully, won the superweight, super featherweight title in January of 78, defended that crown eight times, won the lightweight title in June of 81 over Jim Watt, 
and is making his second title defense at 135 pounds. Well, you mentioned that overhand right. That's exactly what Jackie McCoy told Elizondo. He said, you're doing good with that right hand. Use it more. Use it more often. Let's see he, if he does it. He should, Gil. But he should mix his punch up a little bit more instead of doing the same thing over and over again. Because Aguero, Aguero is waiting for that uh, overhand right and left hook. I know if I was working with Aguero, I'd, I'd be telling him to move side to side, a little lateral movement. Toe to toe they go, and down goes Elizondo. A short, chopping right hand off the rope from Arguello, who calmly goes to the neutral corner. Elizondo looks a little glassy-eyed, but all right. Joey Curtis, the referee, checks him out. It was Elizondo on the attack, and he scored well. But the counter-punching of the champion, Arguello, sent Elizondo to the canvas. Well, you'd think, you think Elizondo would be looking to smother Arguello. He's looking to fight with him. Well, Elizondo's a little dazed now from that knockdown. And here we're going to see Arguello just put his punches together. I think it's just a matter of time from this point on. Arguello is just Mr. Cool in there. He showed no emotion with the knockdown punch. He just went calmly to the neutral corner, prepared himself to come out and try and finish Elizondo. Under a minute to go in round four, left hook lands for the champion. Setting him up, Ray. He's setting him up for that right hand. Well, very few champions have the quality of Aguero. He's a composed fighter. He takes his time. Very patient. Way has that right hand cocked. There it is. Looks like the trigger on a gun. Good left hook followed champion we'd like to alert our local stations along the line we'll be going to a 30 second station break after this round that's 30 seconds remaining now in round four elizondo's been stopped only once in his career on cuts in the seventh round final seconds round number four We'll be back with more of this WBC Lightweight Championship after this word from your local station. There is the champion, Alexis Arguello. We'll show you that knockdown punch, Gil. Well, here they are. They're trading punches. And with a big bomber like Arguello, that can be fatal. And there's that big right hand. Back again with a left hook, and down he goes. The right hand was the one that did the damage, though. As we mentioned, Elizondo last only once in 23 fights stopped on cuts in the seventh round by Viterbo Romas in Houston January of 1979 otherwise he's been doing the knocking out this is round number five of the scheduled 15 round title fight the champion on the right of your screen now circling to the left the challenger Elizondo in black Tim Ryan Sugar Ray Leonard and Gil Clancy live from the Showboat Hotel in Las Vegas Arguello has the boxing ability the skill the experience but Elizondo is tough. He's got plenty of heart. He has a great deal of heart, Gil, but I think he's never faced a guy quite like Aguero with Aguero's talent. You know, it's inside. Elizondo started to punch, and Aguero just stayed there and um, showed his masterful defense. Well, we mentioned that he's a master counterpuncher. utter calm that he displays no matter what the course of the fight is Arguello just seems to be in command even if he gets hit it looks like well okay I know what to do next you know it's amazing he throws a lazy right hand out there and then he lulls you to sleep and then all of a sudden one comes in like a bullet if you watch the balance of Arguello very good balance he has Round number five. From the Showboat Hotel in Las Vegas, lightweight championship action. We'll be back in two weeks at the same location for the WBA version of the lightweight title. Juan Noel defends against Gonzalo Montiano here on CBS Sports Saturday, December 5th. Elizondo is amazing. He gets nailed with big punches and he punches right back. Well, you see the damage that left hook by Aguero is doing to Elizondo. Elizondo. I mean, Aguero goes under and over. That hook landed 
from the champion. Under a minute to go round five. Joey Curtis, the referee, doing an outstanding job, a very unobtrusive presence in the ring. He knows exactly what he has in front of him here, one of the great champions and an obviously very competitive challenger. But Tim, I still notice El Grande's left jab. It comes out and it floats, and with a guy like Aguayo, he has for trouble for overhand right. Well, Tim, that's what we noticed in training the other day, Ray, vulnerable for that right-hand counter. Final seconds, round number five. Round number six from Las Vegas, Nevada, here on CBS Sports Saturday, where an interested observer back in the studio with Brent is Ray Boom Boom Mancini, who is a 14th round knockout victim of Arguello in his first title defense of this WBC lightweight crown. We'll be hearing from him later. You know, Tim, I think this is going to be the round. Uh, Arguello has figured his man out, and I think he, he realized that his left hook is very effective along with that right hand. Well, that's Ray what Leonard. That's what Eddie Futch mentioned in the corner. He said, start throwing that left hook, right hand combination. He's, that's going to do the job. Jackie McCoy telling his challenger, Elizondo, to stay low. Don't be so upright. Well, you notice he's not doing it, Tim. He's standing straight as a stick, and you just cannot do that against a sharpshooter like Aguello. You've got to change your direction and change your height. It's not right going to be the one. From the champion. Well, again, like Gil stated earlier, uh, Aguello, he, sticks to, he pokes his left jab out very slow. It floats out. And it makes you fall asleep, making an opponent falls asleep, and then boom, he comes with a powerful punch. 29-year-old champion began fighting in Managua, Nicaragua, as a young teenager, and since that time, 76 professional fights, 59 knockouts, three world championships in three different weight divisions. You can see why. Well, Alexander has to do more, has to have more body movement. He's walking straight in into Aguero, and uh, there's no feints or anything. He just walks straight in. Been a lot of punches thrown in this fight. Uh, both both guys have to be in really great condition. If one fella starts to get a little tired, he can chase things around a great deal. A lot of action. <laughs> Under a minute remaining, round number six. I don't know how you do it, but Elizondo is going to have to make Aguayo lose his cool to get back in this fight. He's going to have to land a big, big punch. If Alexander can get inside and work the bottom of Aguayo, maybe that will do some damage. But he has yet to get close enough to do any any serious damage to him. Well, and that was the game plan, and that's his uh, history, too, uh, the, his success. Well, almost every time he's tried to get inside, he's been punished. Well, Alexander stated earlier, he said that he wants to uh, cut out the mistake that Ray Boom Boom Mancini made, but he's not doing that. Those who watched that great fight, Mancini and Arguello, remember Mancini did a lot of business inside the first 10 rounds. I was very impressed with Mancini. <laughs> Round number seven, Tim Ryan with Sugar Ray Leonard, Gil Clancy, live from Las Vegas. A reminder of more championship boxing. This one opens with a glory in this seventh round, and it's the champion coming up. Curiously, if Aguero kept that up like he did just uh, a second ago, he can get Alexander out of there. He was throwing, throwing punches like he had an early appointment. He wants to go someplace else. <laughs> As though he had been playing possum for six rounds, too, apart from the knockdown counterpunching in round four. I don't think one punch is going to get Alexander out of there because he's taking some big shots by Aguero. It's going to be a series of combination, I feel. Started to say we're going to see the other version of the lightweight title Next week, they're making Saturday, December 5th, pardon me, not next week, but week from next Saturday, Juan Noel defends his WBA crown against Gonzalo Montiano, 4.30 Eastern Time on CBS Sports Saturday, Saturday, December 5th. 
and fight a guy like Alexander. See, one punch stuns him, and you must take advantage of that opportunity and come back with three, four more shots. Because he's a durable opponent. And he's still in there. Okay, one big punch by Elizondo could maybe change things a little bit. That's true, Gil. Could turn tables around. You know, they're both in there. They're both fighting. Elizondo is not throwing any hard punches right now, though. He seems to be a little discouraged. Clipping right hand scored from the champion to the ear of Elizondo. Look at how beautifully he slips those punches. So calm and so cool. You would feel that uh, Joe would be a little frustrated after hitting Alexander with all those punches. But he's again, he's a very patient, very composed champion. Well, that, that is good because fighters can get discouraged. I know when I work with fighters and sometimes they have a big advantage, you keep hitting a guy and hitting a guy and wouldn't go. And you have to tell him, hey, don't get discouraged. Just keep doing it over again. Eventually, he will go. It's like water wearing out a rock. Well, so now you know how I feel here when I put Tommy Hearns. <laughs> Well, you showed great patience, and of course, those tables were turned. A couple of times, that most interesting fight by Sugar Ray over Thomas Hearns. Round number seven here of this WBC lightweight championship. Abuelo's playing a chess game, and he's waiting for checkmate. I didn't even know you were a chess player. Oh, it's superb. Just missed with that long right hand. Less than 30 seconds ago to the chin of Elizondo and fortunately for Elizondo it was right on the end of Arguello's punch or he might not be standing up at this point he's hurt though Tim he's hurt but he was able to get up that was a tremendous punch and down he goes again and that might be the finish short left of the body appeared to be the problem there and he spits out his mouthpiece Elizondo getting the count from referee Joey Curtis but he is hurt it was a body punch and that's it he cannot continue Alexis Arguello has again successfully defended a world championship 17 fights in a row. He has defended a title. This time, the lightweight crown of the WBC for the second time. It occurs here in the seventh round.